Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to show you how to change the oil in a 2006 Ford Explorer. It has a 4.0 in it, so if your Explorer is around this year, it should be the same uh, procedure. So we're going to remove the drain plug. It's a 13 millimeter on this 4 liter. And we'll pull the plug, we'll get the oil going on it, and then we'll crack the oil filter loose. Sure get any oil on you? Yeah, no oil on me yet. Sometimes the plug holds on to the rubber like that, makes it come out slow the whole way. <clears throat> this is something you can do in your driveway. We're just yep. showing you how to do it on the lift. It's a little bit easier on the left. Yep. And just thread this o ring back down. And you can reuse the bolt, right? Yeah, so this will be ready to go back in. As long as that o ring's not damaged, you can reuse it. If it's damaged, you can get a new bolt from the dealer. Yeah, you want to do an inspection on it, make sure it's not torn. This one's clean, it's good for reuse. Okay, so once the oil's done draining out, we're going to put our plug back in. And we move the rubber on it, so now it threads in, of course, nice and easy. Tighten that up. Nice and snug. Wipe everything down dry. Now, if you notice, the oil filter is up here. And an oil filter wrench is kind of tough to get in there, so they sell a flat type um, sleeve that fits on there, you can put an extension in there. It's an oil filter, it's a form of an oil filter wrench. We'll show you that. It's right here. And it fits right on, it fits right on to your oil filter. It's got little grippies on it. They're pretty inexpensive. Got these at Harbor Freight. that loose and you can take your extension off let's try and line up our bucket here so don't make too much of a mess no you'll make a mess <laughs> what do you call me kitty little man <laughs> My favorite thing to do is to come over here and make us a mess out of Steve's floor. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right, Steve? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so we'll pull the filter down. You can put the filter in the vice app to get your tool off. Let's go drain it in the bucket. Put some clean oil on the new filter. Seal. Make sure the old gasket came down with it. It did. The surface is nice and clean up there. Don't worry about the filter getting dirty because you're going to wipe it off with a clean rag when you're done. Spin it up. Get it snug with your hand, and then we're gonna wipe everything down. We're gonna we're gonna put that wrench back on it and snug it up. Make sure it's nice and tight. You don't have to crank down on it. You just want to nope. snug it up a little bit. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. So we're gonna tighten up our oil filter now with the wrench. This back up there. 
That's about all I need. Now we're going to wipe it down nice and clean. Everything nice and dry. Now most vehicles of this year, um, like I said, this is a 2006. Um, this one has had the ball joints changed. So it's got grease fittings for the upper and lower ball joint, but the outer tie rod ends have not been changed yet. So we'll grease the two ball joints, but there is no grease fittings yet on these outer tie rod ends. The factory ones, Motocraft come with no grease fittings. So normally on this vehicle, um, there are no grease fittings, but we've changed the ball joints on this. So we'll grease this when we get it down, lower it down a little bit, and we'll grease it. And we got the grease fittings on the bottom facing us on an angle here, so that you can see, makes it easy to grease while the wheels are forward. Um, and the top ones, when we lower the vehicle down, we can just reach over the top to grease those. And when you do your oil change, you wanna check your tire pressures, you want to lubricate all your door um, hinges, um, check all your fluids. We check all the lights every time. It's good to just get in the habit of doing that if you're going to do, do your own oil change at your house. Um, it's all part of the service. You want to make sure everything is up to snuff when you uh, get going down the road. Okay. So you want to get a grease gun like this. Um, and they have the grease cartridges that go in there and they're great to have at the house. You can use it on a ride along mower, use it on your your car, eventually you're gonna have grease fittings on your things. And you know, these are about 24 bucks and you can get a nice grease gun. They also have a miniature version of them. I find those run out of grease too quickly though. And uh, you can pick them up at any local auto pot store. They're pretty easy to find. You wanna grease it just to start getting a little bit of grease out of the bottom. You just see it coming out on the bottom right in there. This one. Now it's just yeah, starting to come out there. Okay. Okay, see. So we're gonna grease these upper ball joints. Just pop the grease fitting on there. Give it a few pumps. Take a look, see if we can see some grease coming out. Yeah, there it is. Alright. Go through the other side, same thing. Alright. <coughs> I have my grease fitting pointing forward. Clip on. check our tire pressures go by the manufacturer on the door tells you what they should be and always follow the manufacturer of the vehicle the manufacturer of the vehicle is going to run the tire pressure softer than what the tire company wants you to run it because the tire company is looking for maximum wear so they ride them hard <laughs> so if you go by what's on the door you'll get a smoother ride all right we're going to put the oil back in this four liter the Explorer takes um, five quarts, so we'll put the whole five in there. It takes 530 motor oil. We we'll use synthetic on this. And after we get all the oil in it, we're going to check our belts and hoses, check all our fluids, condition, battery terminals. Make sure everything underneath the hood looks good, there's no leaks. You're trying to look for something that could go in the future. Make sure it doesn't break down on the guy. So, you want to check all your fluids. Top off the windshield washer fluid. We're going to look at our belt. We're going to put the cap on, make sure it's tight. 
Nel proprio. Ok, that's good. Get the light. We're looking for the belt, making sure there's no cracks in the serpentine belt. These are good. If you have multiple cracks in the belt within a one inch period, the belt, uh, one inch space, the belt should be changed. We're looking at our battery terminals here. Uh, these are all clean. And brake fluid is full. Power stand fluid is full. Look at the main fluid here, that's full. So these are all good. There's no transmission dipstick on this thing, it's underneath um, on the transmission itself. So you can't check your training fluid. But uh, everything looks good, nice and clean under the hood on this. So we should be good. We'll check our washer fluid and that'll be the end of it. Yeah, that's full too. <laughs> this guy must really stay up on his vehicle. <laughs> All right. Steve very special.